I mean, I got to play the same way. You know, I'm, I don't, I don't play the way I played in 2011. It's, you know, I got to, I got to play on time, and guys got to get open. Uh, so no, I'm not going to change the way I play. We just have to realize who's out there, who we're throwing to, and how we're going to actually make some hay and score some points. I didn't lose a fumble all last year, uh, and hadn't thrown a pick in a division game in I don't know a while. Uh, so that's kind of the standard that I hold myself to, regardless of who's out there with us. Um, so that's why that's frustrating. You know, I don't look at it as Tay's not here. I got to you know do even more, play perfect football. I've just always held myself to a standard of taking care of the football, and that wasn't good enough on Sunday. You know, at first I thought he was going to, in a roundabout way, blame the receivers for the fact that he didn't have his usual perfect outing against a division rival at least he acknowledges that it is on him to a certain extent that he had the fumble he got devoured by vikings defenders at a time when it oh felt like gosh. the packers were trying to push the the pendulum the other way oh yeah and you know with the interception you just never know because he, he look th th again this is why he should have been there for the offseason program. This is why he should have had his receivers. Take him to Peru for some ayahuasca. I don't know, but you, you got to get to the point where you know where the windows are. You know where you can place the ball. You know who you can trust and who you can't trust. I remember when everybody was losing their minds because Marcus Mariota, when he was a rookie with the Titans, he didn't throw an interception. He went umpteen practices without an interception. Rodgers said at the time, I want to throw interceptions in practice because I need to know who I can trust, and where to put the football. And and again, they had an opportunity in training camp to get there, but it clearly wasn't enough. And uh, I, I think they'll be fine, but you, you can't just piss away games, sorry, Scotland, in September and just assume everything will work out and you'll be the one seed again. No, the, 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 that game you lose in September can bite you in the butt in January when it's time to figure out whether you're home or on the road or a buy or no buy. And I, they just need, they need to figure it out. But, and, and I think, I mean, they should be fine against the bears. All due respect to the bears, but alarms are going to go off. If they look the way they did at home against Chicago, the way they looked on the road in Minnesota. Yeah, I, I agree. I wouldn't be surprised if Chicago hangs around and makes things interesting there. And they got a good defensive coach and let's not forget you know, the Bears' offensive coordinator came from Green Bay. He's going to be able to tell Eberflus and go, hey, when they get in this formation, they want to do this. Rodgers likes to check to this when you do this. They're going to, they're going to be ready for it. You know, I, I got questions about the Packers. I got questions about Green Bay. I do. You know, I challenge Aaron Rodgers to go. I, I think he does got to play different than he's been playing as of late. I do. With this group, yes. You know, I, yeah, there was the play. He he took some hits. There's no doubt about that. I understand that. The play where he gets strip sack fumbled, and we showed a second ago, where Z, you know Zadarius Smith runs over the guard and then runs over AJ Dillon. You know, he's got Christian Watson going down the middle post, and it, it's that's who he's going to throw to. I mean, I don't know if he's going to catch it or he's going to throw the ball on the money, but if he if it's on the money and he catches it, it's going to be a touchdown. But my my major point here is, you know. This is a team that's good. You've heard – we know that. We've talked about it. You've heard me over the last, you know, year or two go, I, I, you know, I don't know if they can win the Super Bowl by just being, like, efficient and we're going to stay ahead of the chains and do all that. You know, they, they sometimes look like they want to play a style like the Patriots played in, like, 2016, 2017. And I want to go, well, your offense is just not as good as the Patriots was. The Patriots' offense was very creative with McDaniels, and they could – be in third and five and always have a play to get the first down or whatever. My issue, and I said this on my podcast yesterday because we have my, you know, what the F happened Wednesday podcast where I break down a lot of film is it's the throws he doesn't make that bother me. That's what bothers me about Green Bay. And what I mean by that, and you heard me say this when I did my quarterback rankings and went back and watched film and we showed some clips from the 49ers game where – you know, it, it is too much about efficiency and completion percentage. And, you know, you just brought up, yeah, I want to throw some interceptions in practice. He might need to throw a few more interceptions in the game this year. You know, again, the team, the teams that went to the Super Bowl uh, uh, last year, he led the league in interceptions. Brady was, you know, double-digit interceptions. I don't look at that necessarily as always a bad thing. It means they're being very aggressive and putting pressure on the defense. Rodgers, in my opinion – 
you know, especially against the good defenses, doesn't put enough pressure on them anymore. It's too dink and dunk, the offense. And, yeah, the offense is part of that, but Rodgers is part of that too. There was a handful of plays in that game where I went, you're Aaron Rodgers. That guy's open 15 yards down the middle. The protection's pretty good. You need to throw that ball. You got to throw that ball. And you can't go, oh, wait, oh, look, I looked here. Now my second read's over in the middle, and he's open, but I don't know what he does, and he throws the ball back into the flat or to the swing route or whatever. You know, it's too conservative that way. And if they want to win and be the number one seed this year, I would say that he can't play that way because the receivers are not good enough. I don't think their running game is, like, special, like it's the 49ers or anything like that, and they're going to take over that way. So I'm interested to see how this goes as the year goes along. Yeah, I know he'll be efficient and good against the crappy teams of the NFL, the lesser defenses of the NFL. But you and I, we're holding Green Bay to the Super Bowl standard. And that, that to me is where he is not on the level anymore of Mahomes, Josh Allen, or Justin Herbert. He's just not. And, I, I, and you know I love Aaron Rodgers, but I love to keep it real more. I mean, he's my favorite quarterback of all time. But he's not on their level. Those guys go, oh, wait, uh, the first read wasn't open. Okay, wait, okay, I still got time. Let me, I'm going to put pressure on the defense and make them regret, you know, not doing something different or leaving this guy open down the middle. And to me, that's uh, something to watch for, at least in Green Bay. Mike, sorry to talk so long, but I had a lot to say there. What they did to start the game. Yeah. Right. The go route by Christian Watson. I almost wonder, Chris. Yeah. Whether they specifically planned that play, they selected that play. That wasn't an audible. That was something they meant to do right out of the gate. No they doubt. had known for days, if not weeks, if not months, that they were going to let Christian Watson run right by Patrick Ooh, Peterson. He looked good. And they were going to get a touchdown on the first play. Yep. And it was going to be on a deep attacking ball. And maybe that would coax Aaron Rodgers to go down the field more often. Maybe. I can't help but wonder whether or not there is a broader push and pull going on here between coaching staff and Aaron Rodgers to get him to pull the trigger. And see, this is one of the realities of the coaching staff being caught in the middle of the dysfunction that I think still lingers to a certain extent between Rodgers and the front office. They probably tiptoe around him. They probably kid glove treatment him more than they should. Like nobody wants to say something to Aaron Rodgers that's going to piss him off. And and every once in a while, you need somebody who's willing to be a jerk to say and to just challenge him to press his buttons. You're Aaron Rodgers for crying out loud. Throw the ball down the field. Exactly Who right. Who cares if you throw an interception? Yeah. Who cares if when you're watching the game back, you don't hear Joe Buck and Troy Aikman fawning all over you for having 62 touchdown passes against five interceptions over the last 37 regular season games? Exactly. Who gives a crap about any of that? Uh, that's, I'm with you there. I'm, that, that, that's, that's the point. That's, the, that's what I'm talking about. You know, that's where to me I've gotten great respect for Brady because I feel like there was a time in his career where he did he he did care about that a little, and then he finally went, "What? Why do I care? I can still throw you know lasers and bombs all over the football field, and defenses are more scared, and it makes my life easier." You know, again, I, I'm one of those that oh, if you're throwing for seventy one percent, you threw only four or five interceptions during the year, you didn't take enough chances. You're not aggressive enough. That, that, to me, is life in the NFL right now. Yeah, maybe if you get on a great team that's just unbelievable system, the team's so great, man, maybe you can play that efficient way of, okay, dink here, dunk here, dink here. Oh, look, I threw for 70%. You know, but that's, to me, where Burrow's special. Burrow threw for 70%, but was also one of the NFL league average leaders in yards per pass and yards per attempt. And he was pushing the ball down the field. That's why that was special to me. It was like, whoa, he was accurate, and throwing high-level passes on a consistent pay basis. And, uh, you know, as we've talked about a lot, the number one thing in, you know, a football game in determining, yeah, win or loss, I know is the turnover margin. A hundred, I get it. The second thing, though, is explosive plays and 20-plus yard plays. And to me, that's where, again, the Mahomes, the Josh Allens, the Justin Herberts, the Joe Burrows of the world right now, 
man, you watch a game with them and you go, oh, well, he threw five interceptions, five turned the ball over five times in a game, but still made so many unbelievable great throws and great plays that there they were able to win the game because it's just explosive play here, explosive play there. They change field position. The defense has to adjust the way they play because they're going, oh, man, he's always looking for just the hammer shot here. We we can't play this aggressive defense or whatever. And and to me, that's where, you know, Rodgers and Green Bay, to me, missed the ball a little bit. And and I got to think LaFleur wants him to push the push the limit, you know, play to the edge a hair more. Uh, and I think he's going to have to this year. There was a game analyst who was a former player, and I can't remember the guy's name. And he used to get dragged in the early days of social media. It would be far worse if he was calling games now. But I remember that he tried to articulate this point, and it was in a very clumsy, clunky way. But the message was basically, don't be afraid to throw the ball down the field. Because three things can happen. Your guy can catch it, right. which is very good. It goes incomplete, which, so what? And if it gets intercepted, it's like a punt. There's so, something to – and pass interference, which we know is going to be called. Well, that's right. right. Throw in number four, the possibility that you're going to draw a flag. Exactly right. And, and there, there was a throw Russell Wilson made the other night, which was not, to me, a very surgical attempt to complete the football. But it was close enough that his guy got shoved and he drew a flag. Yeah. And that that's the other thing. So four things can happen. Two of them are good. One of them can happen anywhere on the field, an incompletion. And if it's an interception, it's like a punt. Yes. So why not? Why not? And it's the threat of it that makes it easier to do all the other stuff. A hundred percent. That's what it is. That's right, Mike. That's right. And then it lends to better play in big game football because now that good defense isn't always going, wait, they're going to throw it short. It's going to be dink and dunk. We can play downhill. They got to back off. And, you know, to make my point here, you know, here we go. Let's just look at look at the names here of Brady through twelve, Stafford through seventeen, Herbert through fifteen, Patrick Mahomes through thirteen. Okay, um, Josh Allen through fifteen last year, Joe Burrow through fourteen. You know, and I know Aaron Rodgers through only four, but that goes back to my point of okay, that's great and fine and dandy. When you're playing, you know, the Bears or the Lions of 2021. But when you want to beat the 49ers and some of the other really good teams in football here down the stretch and all that, that's to me where, you know, they dropped the ball right now. And to me, that's where some of the other guys I just mentioned who have double-digit interceptions, they're scarier to play because of that. And they, and I think they put more fear into defenses as, as of right now because they're going, oh, man. He's looking for the 40-yarder. He's looking for the 40-yarder, and he's going to stay in the pocket for an extra half a second waiting for it to come and open. And then if it's not there, he'll throw dink and dunk passes. And to me, there's a difference in that style of football play. I was a little startled to hear last Thursday night during the opener that Matthew Stafford tied for the league lead in interceptions right. last year right. with Trevor Lawrence at 17. Yeah. I was surprised that the high wasn't above 20 right but still I was surprised that Stafford and Lawrence tied but but again who cares the Rams won the Super Bowl yeah. it doesn't matter they don't take the trophy away from you because you tied for the league lead in interceptions it happens and I, I agree with you completely there is some weird aversion that Aaron Rodgers has to having those numbers show up and maybe it's just a a little wrinkle in his ultra sensitivity he doesn't want to give anybody fodder well, to criticize him, yeah. so he's not going to throw those interceptions because he doesn't want to be the guy who's on the graphic that shows the most interceptions thrown in a given season, even if one of those guys wins the Super Bowl. I, I, I think so. I do think there's it, this is kind of like part of his legacy, right? He's not going to catch Brady as far as winning Super Bowls, but the one thing he is going to be viewed as is the greatest touchdown-interception ratio ever, maybe – you know, the greatest quarterback rating ever. And I think he, that's his little, I'm going to protect this because that's I'm going to go down as the greatest in that area. And, okay, cool. But, you know, to what your point is, it might cost you some big games. And you might not get to the NFC Championship because you're too conservative against the 49ers or might not get to that Super Bowl and win in the Super Bowl because of that same problem.
What were you giving me an applause for? I'm, 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 it's like, congratulations, Aaron Rodgers. You've got the highest touchdown to interception ratio in league history, something about which maybe four people give a crap. I, I, all that matters, it's a team sport premised on winning. You want to win football games. You want to marshal your talents with the goal in mind of doing everything you can to win games. And that's a wrinkle. And, and you know, I, I doubt that, that anyone else out there, and this is, I'm not taking credit for it. I'm, I'm giving you praise here. I don't think there's anybody out there who analyzes the game that has figured it out and is willing to say it. There may be others who have figured it out and they don't have the guts to say it because we have to tiptoe around the delicate genius that is Aaron Rodgers. Ooh, he's Aaron Rodgers. We can't, although more and more people are calling him out. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.